How are we going everyone? Well, well, how good is this weather, huh? Springtime. I've got three layers on at the moment and I'm still feeling the cold and I'm not one who complains about the cold. This wind has not given up at all since yesterday. Uh, yesterday was a shocker, it was blowing a gale and today it's just on and off, on and off. And well, what does it do to your garden as far as your, your spring veggies? Well, these are my tomatoes, have a look at this. Broken just snapped around this, I've got to cut that off. And if you have a close look at the outside edge of these leaves, they're battered, they're, they, they've been beaten up. Look at this, even that, a little bit of caterpillar or snail, but that damage there. This is all wind damage, this one here more so. See the edges there? That little edge there looks like nitrogen burning or something, but it's actually frost, it's cold, not frost, but cold bites, snap bites, cold snap bites. And it's everywhere. Look at these poor tomatoes. I shouldn't have taken the sleeves off. They're all being blown that way. This is broken as well. Yeah, okay, but look at that. that that's the rubbing. Well, this is another thing. This is a topic today, tying up your plants. But see that when it's not done properly? And I say that not done properly, it was fine in any other circumstance, but because of the wind, rubbing, 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 we've caused that to damage. That needed an extra tie. Now, what I've tied this up here with is my, uh, tape and a tool that I have, the tape tool or the uh, maxi tape or max tape tool, that's great to tie up your little seedlings like this. But remember your tomato plants, the stem itself over time will thicken up and become like your, your thumb if not thicker depending on the quality of the environment that it is, the microclimate and how well it grows and establishes through the soil. This little tape that we have around here, see how narrow it is? Now there's no room to give there for the plant to thicken up. So you need to monitor that so that you remove it when it gets bigger. So if it starts to thicken up, it starts to cut, in, cut into the stem. Take it off so it doesn't cut into the stem and cause any more damage. So today what I'm going to do is basically leave that tape on with a little stem on it, uh, the bamboo stake that is, but I'm going to tie these up. Now what we're going to grow here, if spring ever comes, if it ever, ever comes, I've got a feeling we're going to go straight into summer for about a month and then we're going to go bang back into winter. That's what's going to happen here this year. Anyway, we'll just keep doing what we're doing and give it a go. I'm going to tie these up and train these up on this uh, soft tie. Now you can use the, uh, the all natural jute tie, which is this stuff here, but it is a lot more rigid, well, a lot coarser and more abrasive I suppose so when you do tie it up and you get these sort of winds like we're having here <laughs> back to the wind topic quickly those tomatoes are doing wonderfully well because they're sheltered a little bit more and for whatever the reason the wind comes howling through this gap here and straight onto these tomatoes now I feel the wind down below because it's 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 escaping through the conifer hedge underneath but up here there isn't as much wind well, by comparison, yeah, here we go. Just turned it on for you. There you are. It is blowing, but nothing like I can feel down below here. Watch that little plant there in a second. Three, two, one, the wind's gone. Here we go, here it comes again. It's gonna blow and it just keeps wiggling it around. So back to the topic. So what we're gonna do is train these up. Now, I'm gonna train these up to this level here, which is the mesh. And then from there on, they're gonna be spaliered. Whereas some other ones, we're actually gonna train them up on string all the way up to the top and I think I'll be doing the ones inside the the bird netting area. So this gets tied to the base of your tomato plant so the stem underneath tie it up not as a tight tie you don't want it super tight you just want it loose like that and it doesn't have to be a double knot well on my finger it is that is so it doesn't have to be a double knot it can stay like that and on the tomato because my finger is slippery the tomato stem's got a little bit more fibrous or fibers on it so it shouldn't slip off so see if this can prove me wrong someone should have built this better the dynamics or the measurements of this bed is not right i can't lean on the edge it's too far to get in and if i do lean on it if i step in it i squash all the soil i need some knee pads you know the funny thing is we sell knee pads online and i still haven't got a pair for myself uh, here we go Around the base we go, one tie like that is all you need and straight up like that we go and I'm just going to tie it up here. Now I'm pulling it but not enough to rip or yank the plant out of the ground. Just enough to keep it nice and tight, we can go a little bit more, yeah that's about it. Now you need to monitor this folks because over time, see that that's a single tie, just pull it off and it comes off 
straight away. Don't do double knots and triple knots because you'll hate yourself. So pull it through like a shoelace, leave it there. Now you do need to monitor this because it does give over time, it'll stretch and become loose. And especially as your plants get bigger and heavier, they will start to pull it down and weigh it down. So what you'll need to do is ever so often, get back up to the top and just pull it up a bit tighter. So loosen it, tension it, and tighten it again. And that's all it is. Now, as far as the tomato plant, what we do here is, well, let me pinch this little branch off because it's broken. You can pinch them off like that. Leave this one down here below, that's fine. And what we do, now it is staked up, but, but what we do is, as it grows, we wrap the central leader. Let me separate the leaves. And it hasn't grown enough yet to do it properly. But this central leader here, all it needs to do is snake itself around the string all the way up to the top. So at the moment, this is all we've got to play with. So we just wrap it around a little bit like that. We could have started lower, but I'm going to leave the stake there just for the extra support. And then take it off once it starts to thicken up. And by then, this will be growing around this to get up to the top. So that's how we train a tomato without having to constantly tie it up to a garden stake. Now, I am going to demonstrate how to stake up a tomato plant to a garden stake. And how many litres do you run up? Well, on a garden stake, per garden stake, two, maximum three litres, that is. So you'll get all these uh, side shoots or suckers, if, if you want to call them that. They can get trained up to it. But any more than that, it becomes a bush. And it's fine to have a nice bush, bush rambling in the garden, you know, a tomato plant. But the thing is, you've got to have so much root system that's got to feed, all that energy's got to go to that foliage. Now the foliage serves great purpose to protect your fruit. And it's not just tomatoes, it's capsicums, it can be cucumbers as well. So the more plant you've got on top, the more energy the plant needs or strength it needs in the root system to feed it all. So the aim is to reduce the amount of foliage as best you can without stripping it completely. And it's too early now to show you what I'm going to do with these. But as they start to progress, you'll see how I remove the bottom leaves and put the energy towards the top and then try and get as many fruit as possible setting on the sides. Now you saw the Psalms place the other day touching the flowers to help pollinate, that's self-pollinating. I'm lucky I've got enough wind here to do it on its own and the bees obviously, I've got a hive there, two more hives over there, they're doing their business already for me. But you can go around and pollinate them yourself by touching the flowers. And when it comes to pruning, we'll demonstrate that as they grow. But to help the flowers along is the black grit. So don't forget to add your black grit into the garden for that calcium, magnesium, phosphate, which strengthens the root to make the plant bigger and stronger. The calcium, magnesium, silicate strengthens the cell wall of the plant. And that includes the stem, the foliage, the fruit, the flowers. So they are more resistant to disease and insect attack, from attack that is, and are capable of setting fruit and maintaining their vitality and growth. So black grit has that purpose. Soil amendment fertilizer. So tie your plants up if you haven't done so already. Give this a go. Now you don't need a structure like this. You can have basically four stakes in the corner and a bit of um, metal or a timber across the top. I've got this structure here. See how I've got the timber frame over the top? You can have simply that and have your string tied up all the way to the top so that the vine grows itself all the way up. But when it gets to the top, that's when the fun begins. Until then, check out our website because all that stuff's going to come along as it opens up. Check out our website, vasiliesgarden.com. We're still running some major specials. Our lowies have been discounted with free pair of gloves and many, many other stuff, especially the black grit. That's vasiliesgarden.com. From me, Vasili, Maresi. Yes, as folks, the Yarra Valley Plant Fair and Garden Expo is on again this year. It was cancelled for October, but rescheduled for November the 20th and 21st. Put it in your diary. Check it out at yarravalleyplantfair.com.au. Heaps of plant stall holders, plants, garden products, tools, produce, and lots, lots more for you to enjoy. I'm going to be there. Jane Edmondson's going to be there as well, giving you a live talk. Come down and say hello, meet everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. yarravalleyplantfair.com.au. From Eva Silly, Maresi, see you there.